so WWDC, right? This is Apple's developer event. This is where they talk to developers, not consumers, about upcoming changes to their product. And and Apple blurs the lines purposefully a bit with this event um, because they do see they they do see a big marketing push that happens off of this, and folks get excited for the next whatever, right? For the next release of their mobile device for their their Mac. And I I, I have some strong feelings about some of the things they announced and. <laughs> there, there is there are a number of folks that are very large fans of Apple that didn't take too kindly to me responding critically to some of the announcements. So the first big thing they announced was 15-inch MacBook Air. The thinnest 15-inch laptop to date. 18 hours of battery life, six speakers, uses that their M2 chip. I have a, a, a MacBook with an M1 chip. Um, it's silent, it's it's nice using things that are built for the Mac. General web browsing you and, and using other apps that you get from the store. Very much that closed garden ecosystem. As a developer, you need to appreciate your now on ARM chips. As a developer, Developer, that means things shift and you need to build for <clears throat> ARM and you might be deploying to Intel x64 chips. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you build. It changes the way you interact with things. That can be a problem for folks. Quite frankly, there are Azure emulators and tools for working in in the Azure ecosystem, and, and I believe also on, on Amazon ecosystem, that just flat do not work on this hardware because it's ARM. It's the way it is. Your Docker containers that you might be running to integrate and, and test and run different things, they will not work on ARM if they haven't been built for ARM and not every open source product project that you might be using is built in targeting ARM. It's, they, they don't tell you this, but you need to be aware that you can have issues with that. Um, and they, they priced it at $1,800 to start for the new 15-inch laptop. Keep that price in mind. $1,800 for a 15-inch laptop. Um, and they say $1,299 here, but they the price they showed on the screen was $18. 18 hours of battery life, uh, 24 gig of memory, 2 terabytes of storage. As, as a developer, 24 gig is not where I want to be. I want to be at 32. So I look at this as more of a consumer device than a developer device. You can absolutely use it as a developer. 16 gig is going to get you pretty far. But for my money, where I am as a developer, I want 32 in 2023. I do like a, a 13 inch laptop when traveling for, because it, it, especially on a plane, it, it's nice to have just a little bit of space uh, to get work done. But really when I'm at an event and I'm, or I'm traveling and, and working, I want my 15 inch laptop. 17 inch laptop is too big these days. Mac Studio was the next one they announced. They announced a product update, including Silicon replacing the M1 Max and M1 Ultra with M2 Max, M2 Ultra. 192 gig is insane amount of memory. That's a lot. 800 gig of memory bandwidth, 8 terabytes of storage, fantastic. 8K display support. I look at that and go, what? Look, there are folks that can't see the difference between high def and 4K. The human eye can't see that. 24 core CPU, yes, give me give me one of those, absolutely. 76 core GPU, how many cores are on 3060 or 3080 in NVIDIA? There are 5,800 cores on your NVIDIA GeForce 4070. That's the top of the... The top of the line modern that is issued now, and there's 76 on this one. And it's interesting. They use the terms neural engine, model, and learning, but they didn't once use the words artificial intelligence during their presentation. Mac Pro still comes with a cheese grater case. You're going to be able to grate and make fine shredded Parmesan, or, or as we say it in Philly, Parmesan M2 Ultra processor that's now available in it. And it is a crazy stupid price for the Pro, where they were talking about it's able to manage at one point they said it's able to manage eight 4k eight or 16 4k video feeds at once on this device uh no wait wait one two three four five six 24 4k display was what it was when they showed that image that is awesome there's only one small problem with that it still doesn't run obs 
OBS runs like crap on a Mac. As a streamer, as anybody producing live video, while that's great, it can handle all of those video feeds, the tools that folks are using don't work. Apple, throw a couple engineers over there and then we're talking. Then we're talking. There's a reason why the, the major folks in streaming don't use your hardware for it, because it doesn't work with the software. Once again, because it's ARM. So the M2 Ultra, which is a just insane number of core, uh, 24 CPU cores, 76 GPU cores. So that's system on chip. For system on chip, that's pretty good. So 800 gig of memory bandwidth, It's that's phenomenal. Really cool stuff. Full screen experience for standby. Uh, that's great. And your widgets now appear. More widgets fit in the standby screen. And quite frankly, it started to look like Windows 8. Point blank, drop the mic. Their standby screen looks like Windows 8. There's not too much to say about that. Um, you're working on Surface hardware. Sometimes it seems like Microsoft is a bit behind on their own hardware. So the that's, let me grab that. Microsoft is in this weird place. Now, I don't work in the Surface division, Surface group. I have no insight into their plans. There's my dis disclosure on that. They typically use Surface as a as an aspirational device to lead the industry so that they're not clobbering the other PC vendors. Dell, Asus, uh, Lenovo, HP. I have no doubt that if the Microsoft team did want to invest and build top of the line, not just aspirational hardware, but prosumer hardware, they could build that quality. WWDC is a developer show. This, and, and I'll reiterate, folks are looking at this as consumer announcements. It's not. iPad OS 17 and new iPad features. The health app is now available on iPad. Um, there were a bunch of other things that they did as far as window management on the iPad. It's looking more and more like Windows 8. It's coming, and they're putting it on iPad. Like, it's turning into Windows 8. Um, they also had a big thing about integrating and working with PDFs. I don't know. I don't know folks who are in school or, or younger folks that are excited about PDFs. PDFs are a format for folks that are st sending standardized information and documents, legal, finance, healthcare. They spend a lot of time talking about collaboration with PDFs. To me, it looked like this was a shot at, um, at Microsoft Word and Google Sheets. Insurance, that's another good one. Mac OS, they announced the new Sonoma version of the operating system in another California town. Um, desktop is getting interactive widgets. Once again, push towards Windows 8. I'm not saying that, that it's going to become Windows 8, but it's looking more and more like Windows 8 user interface. Windows RT, same thing. AirPods were not forgotten updates meant to improve user experience. I can never get the tap to work at all on these things. If they stay connected to my device for longer than an hour, I'm shocked. They're not, they're not great. They're, they're nice. They're not great. Some good buzzword bingo. Yes, they did not say machine learning. They did not say artificial intelligence at all during. So Apple TV, FaceTime for the television. I, I would rather somehow connect my phone to my Apple TV and use the camera on my phone, which is really good, and put it next to my television and have my FaceTime be cast to the television and know that my phone camera is using that and I already have, right? And, and I know where the camera is. Having a camera just pointed blindly in my family room, there, I've, I've got a privacy question with that. I am a VR fan, okay? I'm an AR fan. I have several Oculus Quest, MetaQuest headsets. Um, I really enjoy the device. This is the MetaQuest, uh, Oculus Quest 2 when I bought it, but now they call it MetaQuest 2. They announced a Quest 3 device. It's not out yet, um, but, and I have an extra battery on the back now. There's a battery back here, an e expansion battery back here that takes us up to, is it 18 hours I can get on this? It's 12 or 18 hours I can get on this. Plus there's a battery up front inside here. 
but this is an entirely contained device. That's a speaker. So you can put this on your head and you can hear whatever's being broadcast. Also, there are two lenses right there. And this is nice wide device with foam here. You can swap out the foam, mount that on your head. And in order to use the device, you can use your hands, but they also provide two controllers that have, that have a couple buttons on it. You can see the buttons there. All right, there's three buttons and a joystick. Plus, of course, you can wave your hands around just like, just like you used to with Nintendo Wii. There are no controllers for this device. There is no battery on this device. You see the cable hanging off the gentleman's head here. I, I'm assuming it's a gentleman off this person's head. Um, it's because there's a battery pack that, that they have tucked away in their pocket. What happens if you don't have pocket? There's a feature called EyeSight that will log you in by scanning your face. There's a lot of face scanning technology here with cameras pointed this way. There's, there's a handful of cameras inside the device that are pointing at your face because it's doing eye scanning. And you don't, you don't move your head so much to go and bring things up, but what you look at is what, they're, is what you're interacting with. And it's very good. It, folks are saying it's amazingly good with hand detection so that you can click things just like you can with the meta quest by tapping your fingers together like that. Cool. That's great. There's a magnetic connector for the power to the side of this. It is a standalone unit, but there seems to be some sort of tethering mechanism that folks are using where you don't necessarily, where you, you need to have this cable hanging off of you, but you'll be able to go for longer time. The battery, they say, is only two hours on this. Shorter and thicker than an iPhone. Obviously, no external battery pack is the best external battery pack company needed to get a system that operates for at least a couple hours on a charge. I, I suspect that they're going to sell bigger battery packs so that you can go longer or some sort of AC adapter thing here. because only two hours on this is not a lot. But on the other side, I stream. That thing is going to snap. It's going to crimp. It, it's, it clearly looks like a braided wire, but durability of this thing, I question and the maintenance of this. They're going to be selling new battery packs on this thing for $100 a pop, I got to imagine. My Jeff Fritz question. It, it, watch them start selling. They, there's a digital crown also for volume. They're really not showing too much of this. The oh, In this article, this isn't a great article. Um, and there's a display. This it, glass up front is a display. It's a rounded display. And it's there's cameras on the inside that are showing what your eyes look like on the outside of this. And if you're watching something and you're, you're engaged with something, it blurs the entire thing. So if you're watching and you're engaged with something, they blur it out so that folks can't see your eyes. But if you're working, doing something and somebody approaches you first, they'll make that person appear in your display. This is not see-through. This is a display on the front of a solid device with lenses on the inside. But when that person approaches you, they'll then be able to see your eyes. Very interesting and cool technology. Because that's that's something that, that we've had for a long time with VR, AR as a problem. The, the concept of the glass hole, the folks that were wearing Google Glass, the, the one display that came over your one eye almost right it looked like you're wearing a monocle and it worked with your android device neat device but it was very off-putting because oh are you looking at me or are you looking at the the monocle that you're wearing it, wearing devices like your oculus right and other vr devices samsung gear vr playstation vr and you've got this solid thing in the front well it's very off-putting to walk up to someone and you can't see their eyes. You can't see half their face. What are they doing? Are they looking at me? Are they paying attention? Right? Even when I'm talking to somebody, if I'm off not looking at the screen like this and talking to you, it's off-putting. It's, it's as a human interaction thing, that's difficult. That's not something that folks are comfortable with. So I applaud Apple. That's a really cool idea. Makes it a little bit heavier on the front of the eye. Less real estate to install googly eyes. <laughs> so there's a good question. Can, just like we have filters in Snapchat and Zoom and, and Instagram and whatnot, I can definitely see filters going on the front of this to be able to spruce up the way that my eyes look in the front.
there are Zeiss lenses, optional customized Zeiss lenses for folks that wear glasses. And this is where a number of folks really got hung up. Because this device is scanning your eyes, it sounds like glasses, number one, don't fit inside of it, it sounds like. Because everybody says you need to use these customized magnetic lenses that snap into the device. That's a real problem. Because after I purchased this device, it's not, I, I, I wear contacts a lot of times while I'm here on stream, but for folks that can't wear contact lenses, that have very difficult prescriptions to then have to tell them, oh, you have to go get your prescription made into these two lenses, customized, and it already costs some folks five, six, seven hundred dollars for literally the cost of another phone to get glasses made. And now you've got to add that on to this price to use the device because you can't wear glasses with this is what's being conveyed. I'm not saying that that's the truth, but that's what's being conveyed. It's, I think that's a short sight. I think that's a mistake because you're, you're quite literally cutting off accessibility to a significant portion of your potential audience. A lot's been said about the price. The, pri the problem with the, that, that I have with the price, okay, that price is as much as three of those MacBook Airs that we looked at earlier. Three. How many people are going to buy one of these, much less three, for a device that only one of them can use? This is very much a high-end developer um, or enthusiast product at this point. It also does not do 3D. There is no 3D modeling. It's quite literally a just a larger display for all the things that you get on your iPhone or your iPad. The device is priced the same as a console, a game console unit. This is 10 to 12 times more expensive. Is it 10 to 12 times more productive? No. This is priced comparatively to HoloLens. HoloLens, it uses a trans transparent shield that you see through, and they augment on top of that. Different device, different approach. I don't know the current state of development of the HoloLens. I'm not involved with that group. But it feels like it's competing in that space. I applaud them for getting more of the productive apps on the device sooner than later so that consumers can even consider it, where Microsoft hasn't made the HoloLens available for consumers to consider at all. In order for this to become a consumer device, that price has got to go down by 90%. I'll, I'll even say it's got to come down and be the same price as an iPhone. You got to get that to $1,000. You cut that by 66% for folks that are on the high end that, that are interested in buying these. But breaking into a new market, a new device for Apple, and there's already other devices on the market for PlayStation, Samsung, Oculus. You're, you're not competing with this. The other thing is I question the release time. This is going to be available in Q1 2024. They're giving us six, seven months notice on this. You're also releasing it at a time of year when consumer spending is down after the end of year holidays. However, budgets are just opened up for, for businesses, which leads me to think they might be positioning this more as a business purchase. It's interesting. So, so that you make that decision. I'm not looking at this and saying, well, do I buy three laptops or do I buy this headset? Neither. I'm not, I'm not there also. I'm not there yet. Uh, price point that is aimed at a focus group, yes. But Apple doesn't typically cut prices. Let's, let's make sure we, we remember that. Apple doesn't typically cut prices. Prices go in one direction with Apple devices, as we've seen in the past 10, 20 years with iPhones and Mac. So it's curious to see what the future holds for this, but this is a little bit too much for, for me to consider. So uh, C Sharp Titan says, I read that Apple is working with Unity. That's correct. So there is a toolkit that you can use with Unity that will deploy and run over here. That means 
You can program this with .NET. Ah, that's interesting. That's very interesting. We knew Unreal Engine was off the table because of Epic's lawsuits. Oh, yes. Oh, SP Trombley. No, no, no. Go, Knights, go.